So today is the day, the first time that I'm ever going to use a battery powered rotary mower. I know that might sound sort of crazy because this is a lawn care channel. How would I have not used one before? But for some reason, the opportunity just has not come to fruition until this point. So I'm excited today to give this a shot, especially because I know a lot of you have been waiting for this review sort of on this mower or to see what this mower is all about because it is brand new in the market. This is the Milwaukee battery powered mower that came out this year. They did send this to me to be able to test out this season. I've done a video already back in, I think it was January or so when I definitely was not mowing. I went over some of the features of the mower, covered the basics of how it works and all of that stuff without actually being able to use it. So if you're interested in the spec side of things, I will link that video right here and also have that down in the description if you would like to check that out. Batteries are charged, so it's time to get mowing. The one thing that I did want to mention about the batteries is that this does come with a set of batteries. These are the 12 amp. So if you do have some Milwaukee batteries and think, oh, I'll just grab this mower, these are the ones that are specifically recommended for the mower because of the extra power that's needed. But they do come with the mower. These batteries on their own are very expensive. So they come with both of the batteries and then also this rapid charger so that everything's set up and ready to go. A couple of things to note before I get started is that I'm gonna set the height of cut over here. This is one lever very easy to do so this controls the whole deck personally I actually sometimes like being able to control the front wheels separately from the back just depending on if you want to get in between the settings you can do that sometimes but this is a very easy way though I think for most people with just this single lever so that is one thing to note the other thing is that I have not sharpened the blade so it just came straight as it came out of the box. A lot of times I will sharpen a blade even though it's brand new. Most of the time they don't come very sharp, but I'm gonna today mow with it just like it came out of the box to start with, and we'll look at some of the results of that so that you get an understanding of buying it and not having to sharpen the blade right away. And these settings are in half inch increments, one inch to four inches. So obviously down here at one, you're set at one inch go all the way up to a setting of seven here, and that would be at four inches. The last time that I mowed, I was mowing roughly three and a half. So I will probably go up to the around that level. So that would be about a six. We'll see how that does. I may need to lower slightly, but again, you only have half inches where I would prefer probably to have quarter inch if possible. I also have this mulching plug in, so this just pops in and out of here. And also there's the side discharge chute that we'll test as well, but that just goes in there like that. There's a little notch right here, so that sits on there like that. Yeah, definitely in some of these spots it'll be around four inches, maybe slightly over. So I think at three and a half, that should be a good place to start, taking about a half inch off. All right, so just a few passes in here and I'll give you some just initial very early impressions here. So this is on mulching mode and I had no problem whatsoever. Like I said, I'm cutting off probably about a half an inch, maybe slightly more in some of these areas. And this area is growing really thick and lush right now because it's an area where most of our dogs come out during the winter time. And so crazy flush growth going on right now. So the grass also has some wetness to it. It's not completely dried out yet from the evening last night. No problems with that whatsoever. It's in mulching mode, as I said, and I'm not hearing the mower struggle or have any sort of issues with that. Uh, I did look at the quality of cut, and as I said, this grass is somewhat wet. Looks fairly clean. It still looks like a rotary mower. Right out of the box, I'm pretty impressed so far by the fact that no issues whatsoever. I don't hear it bogging down. Very quiet. The only thing I would say is this speed dial right here. I would say set it around the midpoint, so that would be about three to start out with and see what your walking pace is. 
This of course will still control how fast and slow you go, but this is just a max speed type of thing. There's also right here a high lift mode on this, which I did not try yet. So I'm going to try that next on a pass or two. See if I notice anything different with that in terms of the cut or anything else. You can definitely hear the power difference on the high lift. I think that's probably something that if you're bagging, it said, you know, you can use that feature to do a lot better of lifting that grass into the bag as well. So I'm gonna put on the side discharge now and I'm going to go through a few passes, just see if that makes any sort of differences. I don't really like to mulch myself personally. I mow often enough that discharging the clippings out onto the grass is not much different than mulching, but I feel like usually on my other mowers, I get a better cut because I'm getting rid of those clippings things are not swirling around the deck clogging things up especially if you have longer grass and you're trying to mulch it it's a lot harder to do that in the deck than it is to just discharge it out so that's what I like to do personally on all my other mowers I'm gonna try that now put on this discharge chute and see what the differences are All right, so just looking at that, something just feels better to me about mowing like that. Maybe it's just because of what I started with when I was a kid and just watching that grass come out and you see that fine cut afterwards. But I don't know, I just there's something about seeing the grass actually being cut instead of it just swirling around the deck that feels more natural to me. I'm just a weirdo though, so that's okay. So on that second pass back, I turned on the high lift with the discharge. You can definitely tell there's more power, but it also sounds more like a normal mower in terms of, I feel like the regular setting sounds like it's cutting fine, but it just doesn't sound quite like the blade is spinning as fast as maybe a gas powered mower. The high discharge mode sounds much more like the speed of a regular gas mower. One other thing while I'm thinking about it here, definitely when you get to the end of a pass, and you start the mower again, so you engage the actual drive again, it does sort of want to jump. Now I've had that same thing on my Honda mower for a very long time. I think it's because, because the front wheels are so light and it's rear wheel drive and you get a lot of traction. These wheels do have really good grip to them as well in terms of the pattern that's on the tire. Just something to note, you have to get somewhat used to that. You don't want to just go full speed again right away or your front tires are gonna jump off the ground. You have to ease into that a bit more. Seemed like it picked up the grass just fine, not a lot. Obviously it's only two passes, but seems like everything's in the bag as it should be. I'm sure now all of you are saying that's great. You're not cutting off that much grass though. What about a situation where it's really overgrown and you don't want to chop it off, but you have to go through some pretty thick grass? Well, for scientific purposes, I'm willing to do a little scalping somewhere. So how about right over in this spot over here, as you can see, I went through one spot today with my real mower to test that, see how that would go through there. So how about we go right next to this with this set to the regular mode. I'll probably put it in mulching just because I feel like most people would probably be mulching in most situations and we'll see what happens. So that was on mulching and just the regular mode, no high lift, no problems with that whatsoever.
So that really wasn't even a scalp, but I did cut that from about three and a half to two inches. And so that's what it looks like. The surprising thing to me is that I don't even really see any clippings or clumps of clippings or anything. Usually when you do a cut like that on a mulch mode, you'll get some of those clippings that are clumping up. But obviously this wasn't a very large pass either. Maybe if I had like a 50 foot pass, it would make a difference, but nice and clean, it looks good. One of the things that I wanted to look at here was how the deck looked after those first few mow passes. Some buildup, as I said, this grass is pretty wet today. It's got a lot of moisture in it. And so that's pretty typical, looks fairly normal. There is a spot down here where looks like this cover doesn't seat in there absolutely perfectly, but the grass just tends to look like it's gonna build up around that and do a seal of its own. The blade as well on these is not much of a high lift blade to begin with. I'm pretty sure that Milwaukee said they're coming out with a more high lift blade for this. If it's not out already, it might be. So that would have more of a fin up here. And that way, as the blade is spinning around, you're creating more suction, which would not be a bad thing whatsoever. I know they said that that will cut down on some of the battery life. But for me, I think because I'm mostly gonna be using this in a backyard that's 4,000 square feet or so, I don't think that the battery should have any problem getting through that, at least right now. With those passes that I did, about half of the yard, it has not moved at all on the battery meter whatsoever. But this blade, definitely not super sharp. So I would say it wouldn't be a bad idea to just put a file on that, make it nice and clean and see if it makes a difference. So I really barely touched those up, but it just gives the edge at least just a slight touch up so that it feels sharp, sharper at least. So this has this design so that you really have to fit this into here to get it back on, right? Just make sure that your blades are facing down so you're gonna be mowing into the grass. You don't want them to be facing that way. Make sure that you get this on there around the blade just like that it'll pop into place this one has a specific shape here fit around that tightly so everything goes back on and it's not really too difficult to figure out So there it is, the backyard. I mowed this now at three inches, so I re-mowed pretty much the whole thing. Even the few swipes that I had already done at three and a half, I just went over those and did the whole backyard at three inches. I think overall it looks great. I don't see any stragglers. I don't see anything that would indicate any sort of issues with the quality of cut. Now after I did sharpen that blade, I didn't notice a major difference. I, I wouldn't consider that that was really a full sharpening either. Just a few swipes through there with the file wasn't really that much of a sharpening, but quality of cut wise, I wouldn't say it's a commercial mower cut quality, but we're not looking at five to $10,000 for a zero turn here. Definitely a chunk of money for the mower, but I think overall cut quality of this looks really, really nice. The other Overall, the other things I like about it, it's very lightweight easy to move around, of course you can store it, you can lift it up. Also, I would say my number one thing that I love about it is just that it's so quiet. Now you're still gonna hear a blade running, you're still gonna know you're mowing. It's a different experience for me coming from such a loud machine like the Time Master, but that much more quiet mow is so much more enjoyable. I just think being able to hear and being able to put on some headphones and not have to blast music or anything like that is such a nice thing with these battery powered mowers. And also it doesn't bother so much of the neighborhood not having such a loud machine. Some the other things that I would have liked to see would probably be that half inch increment. I don't love the half inch. I would have preferred if there would have been a quarter. The other thing would be, I still feel like this is the look obviously of a push mower and it's a 21 inch push mower. So you're going to say, well, how would it look any different? No, it's not going to look different. But if you've ever used a Time Master, you notice that it's a bridge between, I think more of a commercial style mower and the way that the cut looks. You got that 30 inch stripe. And this definitely still looks like you have a push mower out there and you're push mowing. So I'm probably the most particular person that anyone could think of. My wife will tell you by far that I care more about little things than most other people would 
would ever care about. So all of this is just to give you my impressions of it and to give you my honest feedback after the first mow. So some of these things you might say, well, it doesn't really make a difference to me if it's a push mower, it's a push mower. And that's totally fine. But the look of it, obviously, I still feel like doesn't rival exactly what I get out of my Time Master. So speaking of the Time Master, I know many people probably want to know, what's my opinion? I've had a Time Master since 2013, I believe, the original one and the one that had the bigger motor now that I have currently. And so I know that's gonna be a question, which one would you choose? Right now, I would say probably I would still personally choose the Time Master. But for me, the time savings alone on the Time Master at 30 inches and how busy I am and things, and for a lot of people with busy lives and things to do, the time savings is a major thing. Also though, the things that you need to know about the Time Master is that very heavy machine, much different in terms of pushing that thing around even though it is self-propelled. It's not hard when the self-propel is on, but just pushing the machine around compared to this thing, major difference. Two would be loud, very loud machine, the 223cc motor, definitely not quiet even with my ear protection on. I'll definitely notice that I'm mowing with it. It's a loud machine. And three would be not very fuel efficient. It is kind of a gas hog. Just mowing the backyard, outside my fence, inside my fence. It's roughly 6,500 square feet or so. I always go through about a tank of gas. So thinking about that now, those are some of the things that between these two mowers and as you think about a battery powered versus something that's maybe gas powered, that would be some of the things to think about. So definitely with the Time Master though, the way that it stripes, the way that the cut looks closer, I would say, to commercial quality, really that comes down to the personal preference and what you're after. I can't tell you one way or the other what's best for you, but those are just my thoughts. Really had a good time today testing this out. Please check out another video here on the channel if you would. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next time.